Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile. Today, what I wanted to do is demonstrate a new method I've come up with for crafting jewels. Now, jewels are normally crafted either by using Chaos Orbs uh, repeatedly, until you get something that's got real potential, or alternately, by starting with an item that is magic, and that has two desirable mods that you create by using an alter uh, uh, alteration orbs and augmentation orbs, and then throwing a regal orb down on it, hoping to get a third synergistic and powerful mod. Now what I wanted to do was experiment a little bit with using the very, very, very cheap fossils that exist in this league. So, dense fossils which were very expensive last league are something that favours heavily rolling energy shield on items. Now energy shield's off meta, but it still has the potential to be very powerful. Dense fossils both have the ability to innately roll energy shield on uh, cobalt jewels. Any any cobalt jewel, no matter how you roll it, can roll a prefix that grants six to eight percent energy shield. But dense fossils also grant an additional prefix that grants uh, that grants an increased global defenses. And global defenses increases energy shield, evasion, and armor equally. So for that reason, there's a lot seems to be a lot of potential for dense fossils on jewels to potentially stack and give you a double dip on energy shield. It's entirely possible that it's coded in such a way that you can't roll both mods, and if that's the case then that's just going to um, come along and ruin the party. Uh, you're not going to see both of them at once, but that doesn't mean that the individual dense fossil mod isn't good. Next up we have aberrant fossils. Aberrant fossils provide more chaos modifiers. There's a few quite powerful chaos modifiers that can naturally roll on jewels. Uh, non -ailment, uh, increased non-ailment chaos damage over time is, a, is an inherently very powerful mod, as is the chaos resistance. Uh, 7 to 13% isn't much, but it is still an appreciable amount. And so for that reason, and there's also the potential to get additional chaos damage from the aberrant fossil as well. So there's lots of reasons to consider using these. The other thing that these do, and this will be important later, is that they block lightning modifiers entirely. Now we're trying to craft items that are spellcaster focused and that have and that are energy shield focused. And generally speaking, if you're if you're putting chaos damage on an on a spell, you probably don't care very much about physical damage. Enter the metallic fossil. More lightning modifiers, no physical modifiers. When you have both the both a no lightning modifiers and a more lightning modifiers, the no lightning modifiers is the dominant of those two interactions. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up a dense fossil, an aberrant fossil, and a metallic fossil, and stick them into a powerful alchemical resonator. You can use either powerful or potent resonators here, uh, and if you're using potent resonators, skip the metallic fossil. But the reason I'm using powerful ones is partly because they're just cheaper at the moment. Uh, due to a couple of things with the Legion League, uh, powerful resonators are quite a bit cheaper than potent ones, and that's just because they're oversupplied. Demand for these is really high. Now, I'm using Cobalt Jewels that I've applied a Scouring Orb to. Now, this is a total and utter brick. We got the very powerful 3 to 4% to non ailment chaos damage over time multiplier, so uh, Knack Dotum, uh, which is a very powerful mod, but it comes with completely non synergistic mods. And that's going to be the case with the dense fossils. They do have a lot of redundant block crap that they can roll. So that's fine, that's going to happen, we're just going to uh, roll over it. The benefit to this strategy is that all of these fossils are exceedingly cheap. I just picked up a whole bunch of metallic fossils for the grand sum total of 0.4 chaos orbs each, and dense fossils are a bit more expensive than that, but not much. Uh, aberrant fossils are also very, very cheap, and they always stay cheap too. Okay, here we have energy shield recharge rate is the defenses related mod that we got, which isn't great. Cast speed while holding a shield is real, and this time we got cold damage over time multiplier. Even though we're um, biasing in favour of getting more chaos modifiers, we're not, and we're not doing anything to cold, we can still get the cold ones. Uh, my attitude to this is that it is probably not good enough to sell to anyone, and so for that reason, I'm just going to roll over it rather than rather than uh, scour that and use something else. 
Firing away with a third attempt. Energy shield. Okay, this is what we wanted to see, isn't it? Uh, have a look at this here. We've got the first roll is 8% energy shield. The second roll is 4% energy shield, and that stacks. Uh, it also happens to give 4% armor and evasion, but chances are that a character that's using energy shield doesn't care about that. The third mod that we got is 3 energy shield gain for each enemy hit by your attacks. That's a, a deceptively powerful mod. This is a really solid jewel, and it's one that I'm quite happy with. Of interest, this could have been acquired just by using a standard one socket resonator and a dense fossil. Uh, there is nothing on this that benefited from the fact that I'm using an aberrant and a metallic fossil. You could have got that with just a dense fossil and nothing else. Now, we've run out of three socket resonators, so I'm just going to use alchemical and aberrant because I've got a feeling that I may have a use for those later. So here we have a bunch of staff related mods block and attack speed. We have minion crap and we have fire resistance. Okay, this doesn't really have anything going for it. Even though it's got four mods on it, uh, it's not good enough for anyone to want to use, so reroll. Increased chaos damage is one of the subterranean mods. Uh, that's a very powerful mod. Unfortunately, it is combined with utter trash, and so for that reason, it can go the hell away. Block with a shield, attack speed with a shield, and uh, Nakdotum. Okay, 3% Nakdotum is solid. Uh, this is as, as badly divined as it can possibly be, but um, just having a quick look here. There's nothing outstanding about this jewel. Uh, it has some potential maybe to be of use to someone. I'm going to throw this in a cheap stash tub uh, in case someone just happens to want it, but... Uh, just because they're looking for any source of Nakdotum that they can get. Uh, I've run out now of Aberrant Fossils, but that's fine. I've still got the Metallic Fossils, and we'll see if we can hit anything here. And we've got Fire and Lightning Resist. Unfortunately, we got the Armor if you've hit an enemy recently. That's a Delve specific... Uh, that is a Delve Dense Fossil model, I believe. I will just confirm that. Yes, it is of the Underground, and it is a Rubbish mod. So 1% chance to block attack damage while holding a shield is terribly weak, and unfortunately the Dense Fossils, part of the cost of the power of having that uh, Global Defenses mod that does does indeed stack with increased, with Local Energy Shield, oh, sorry, Global Energy Shield, part of the cost of that is that you do have more chance of rolling these shitty block mods. Um, cast Speed with Lightning Skills. I think in general this is not totally terrible, but it is not particularly great. In any case, I did have one really solid hit here. 12% uh, energy shield, divinable to 14. This is the sort of jewel that I would consider taking to Leo in research to use uh, Leo tier 3 in research. What he will do is he'll have the effect of an exalted orb on an item that you own, uh, but it's not, it's not a real exalted orb. So it can't be used for other uses of Exalted Orbs, like, for instance, uh, paying for some of the most powerful master Mastercrafts on the crafting bench. Uh, it's not a real Exalted Orb, but it is something that can be used to slam an item to put a fourth mod on it. I'm actually going to, the next time I get Leo in research at Tier 3, I'm going to slam this jewel with him. And if I hit hard with a slam... I will then consider trying to divine this to be perfect. On average, it will take 18 rolls, 18 divine orbs to get this perfect. Uh, that is three possibilities for the first roll, three possibilities for the second, and two for the third. Three by three by two is 18. And so there's a lot of... Um, there's a potential for that to be an expensive endeavor, but if I hit really hard with a divine orb, if I was to get a damage mod as the last suffix... Uh, this has a lot of potential to be an extraordinary jewel, uh, one that could sell for a considerable amount. Even as it is, I believe that a character that is stacking energy shield would would seriously consider using this jewel if they had their hands on it, uh, and if they wanted to prioritise defence over offence. There would need to be an attack build, because that three energy shield for each enemy hit by your attacks is actually a very powerful mod. It's much, it's deceptive, it is so much better than it looks. 
in any case, uh, if you've got any questions about using uh, about using cheap fossils for d uh, for crafting jewels, fire away in the comments below. Otherwise, hope you have a good one.